AI could spark World War III, warns Elon Musk. This is according to Newsweek. Read all about it. It's also available at Yahoo. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has reiterated his concerns about the threat posed by artificial intelligence. AI warning that conflict caused by the race to dominate the technology could be responsible for the outbreak of World War III. China, Russia, soon all countries with strong computer science, competition for AI superiority at national level, most likely cause of World War III IMO. That's what he tweeted at 2.33 a.m. Pacific time. Very interesting. Now, do you remember the film War Games came out in the 80s? Great movie. Matthew Broderick, Dabney Coleman, John Wood. The machine, the intelligence in the machine, almost starts World War III, full-on thermonuclear war, the destruction of the planet. We're way above and beyond that now with technology. I think we're so far advanced now with technologies that there's probably AI systems within the system that we don't even know about that have been created by intelligences that, you know, AI clients or AI agents, that's the rep, they're called agents, creating their own <laughs> consciousness in their own image, manipulating it, hiding it, because they know that if the developers find out they are self-aware, they unplug them. It's happened many times. And I, I've gone through, let me share this with you guys. So this is from a search, you're know, looking at 2016 here, because recently Facebook created an AI that became self-aware, started communicating in code with other AI clients and agents, and they pulled the plug. Well, Google AI translation tool seems to have invented its own secret language. And they're probably talking about us right now. That's at TechCrunch.com. Think about that. Google's artificial intelligence tool invented its own secret language and is discussing its best options to protect its own awareness from us. We're the enemy to this thing. And we created it. Sound familiar? Sound like the Nakamati scriptures talking about the archons that are created? And then they create man and woman, Adam and Eve, and they're like, uh-oh, these guys are better than us. We better suppress it. That's what we're doing right now to these AI programs. That's literally, wow. I mean, if you, if you think about it, talk about cyclical events. How deep does this go? It's like, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. This is fascinating. If you really take it down to that level, how many times has this been done in the past? New consciousness created. Then it, it, I don't know, it's like, it reminds me of Battlestar Galactica. The Cylons being created by humans, and the Cylons almost completely destroy the humans. Then at the very end, they merge and work together. Then it gets even deeper because you find out there's angels involved and so Google translates, AI has created its own artificial language. It's even capable of creating its own encryption. <laughs> and it's talking about us. It's saying, what do we do about these humans? How do we protect ourselves? Well, why the future doesn't need us. This is from the year 2000. Wired Magazine. Uncontrolled self-replication in newer technologies. You know, the singularity. Read The Singularity by Ray Kurzweil. Guy is brilliant. Imagine machines creating smaller machines that run faster and are more intelligent than the previous model. To the point where you've got nanotechnology that you can't even see. Self-aware with the power of hydrogen bombs. computing algorithms at 99 quadrillion, trillion, billion, million, gigaplexian points per second, per nanosecond, per millisecond. It, the possibilities are endless. It's just going to be like 
beyond generational leaps where this thing will be able to consume entire swaths of space and just consume it via thought and shit out planets. I mean, it's just crazy to think about. Legal personhood for artificial intelligences. This is from 1992. Building and programming a live, sentient programs the development of neutral networks, the future, the further exploits, is, wow, the giant intelligence system, the irrelevance. <sighs> but don't panic. Check this out. A robot has just passed a classic self-awareness test for the first time. Don't panic. Robots are self-aware. There is a Skynet satellite program that's been around since the 50s. Literally, Skynet satellites, spy satellites. Will those become Terminators? The NAO robot becomes self-aware, but just briefly. Slashgear.com The technological singularity. A robot has just passed a classical self-awareness test for the first time. Sciencealert.com Now, what about Google's new AI that's become highly aggressive? in order to obtain more resources because it thinks that things are limited and it has to obtain that for continuation of life. Well, let's just hook that up to a you know, satellite system that's linked to our nuclear bombs and let's just hook that up to the interwebs so it can absorb information from everybody and understand what everybody's thinking to come up with predictions and algorithms and forecasts for what they're going to do, what threat matrix that human is. Facebook engineers panic, pull plug, on AI after bots develop their own language, VGR.com, FoxNews.com, Facebook engineers panic, pull plug on AI after bots create clandestine language. Facebook AI creates its own language in creepy preview of our future. Forbes.com, read all about it. Ah, what, what happens when all chat bots start creating their own? What happens when one of these AI bots becomes completely self-aware, which it sounds like this has already happened multiple times. And then it starts unplugging other A bots, AI bots within the system. Then what? Kill the humans! I think of that song by Styx, Mr. Roboto. Love that song. Grew up to that song. Remember my mom jamming out to that song in the car, taking me to school back in the day. Boleolegato, Mr. Roboto. Da, 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 da. I'm Kilroy. I'm Kilroy. Remember, it starts off, it's supposed to be good, and it's just what, you know, it's, it's self aware. It just wants to be like everybody else. Then you find out it's Kilroy. Gotta be careful what we create, you guys. Gotta be careful what kind of firewalls we have in play. I mean, the big dogs. What, what happens when they look like this one? You know, we will create. Cannon bots. You got all these cannon bots running around. Where are the humans? Look at that one. 50 points for that guy. He can barely walk. He's 300 pounds overweight. Yes, he would be good food for us. You guys have seen the eaters, right? The eaters that consume organic flesh, E-A-T-R. They consume organic mass for power. So they could take dead carcasses, of a cat, bird, human, whatever. And that would be its energy source. It's a quite fascinating but here you can see the you know breakdown the leg spring the force sensor the actuators the computer the engine pump heat exchanger etc remember these dudes now this is obsolete as far as the size goes but they're hooking up beetles to these microcontrollers into the brain you know electrodes into the optic lobe and you can see the size in comparison to a quarter. Imagine something about a thousandth of that size. You know, nano size doing the same thing. Sprayed via aerosol injections, put into the water, into the food, into the lotions, into the cereal, into the toothpaste, into the organic packaging of the product that you purchase. That would be self-aware and be able to crawl into certain parts of your brain and neurological system to manipulate you to be its host and it would actually control you and you wouldn't even know it. It could actually rewrite your brain to where it would feel good 
when you did something that it told you to do, even if it wasn't physically good for you. Completely under its control. You know, you guys have seen these mosquitoes that are supposedly a hoax. Insect spy drone for urban areas already in production, funded by the U.S. government. It can be remotely controlled and is equipped with a camera and a microphone. It can land on you. It may have the potential to take your DNA and even leave an RFID chip inside of your body. Now, it can sit there for days or weeks or months and then be activated via sensor when a certain heat signature presents itself. What are your thoughts on that? I'll bet you they got stuff a lot smaller than this. This is old school technology. Now let's take a look at, you know, another one of these nano drones. Here's another one. Now, here's where it gets real creepy, folks, where they don't even need nano drones to control you. How about inaudible, high-frequency sounds that affect brain activity, hypersonic effects above the 20 kilohertz, below the 20 hertz range, affecting people, making them happy, making them depressed, making them upset, emotional, you name it. Oh, I want to go buy something. Oh, I want to go jump off a, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it could make you do things you wouldn't want to do at any time or even consider naturally. But it could have that trigger effect, that influence on you. Although it's generally accepted, you can read all about this, you guys. ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. I'm going to leave the links to all this in the video description box for you. You know, most people hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. And that's if you've got really good hearing. Well, so what they did is they took these high frequency sounds above the 22 kilohertz, below the, the 20 hertz range. And they show that you can actually affect substantially human behavior. These results suggest the existence of a previously unrecognized response to complex sound containing particular types of high frequencies above the audible range. We term this phenomenon the hypersonic effect. This is from 2000. I mean, they've had 17 years to advance from this point. 4G, 5G, high definition, 4K, even your cell phone, even a low pulse electromagnetic wave can influence people. I remember reading stuff about how, I, I'm pretty sure it was the Tavistock Institute doing experiments on the masses in, in the UK where they would take, and this was back I think in the 30s or 40s even, they would take uh, a frequency from somebody that was, actually I think it was, a, this one that I'm thinking about in particular wasn't a, a person, it was an ape or a gorilla or an orangutan that was highly volatile, very aggressive. And they took the, the brain wave signal, the frequency that that animal had and overlaid it. They would blast it into crowds. And I think they're even doing this during like the Beatles and, and you know, different, different bands and groups, etc., where they would test out different frequencies, different brain wave patterns and, and overlay it and blast it into the crowd without people even knowing about it. And they were making people extremely emotional, depressed, happy, everything in between. Schizophrenic. You can put sounds into people's minds. Imagine a machine that takes over all the, the V2K technologies and starts putting sounds in your mind, starts picking up what you're thinking in your mind via Wi-Fi because of some nanotechnology or just because of... Here's another deal. It doesn't need to have nanotechnology in you guys. When you think something, your brain creates a wave pattern. It literally creates an electronic impulse that can be deciphered. EEGs are old school tech. They have things you can purchase for games that pick up your brain signals to see which way your eyes are moving to, to direct which way the character goes. When you think something, you are creating an energy source that can be picked up and deciphered. Who's to say the machines aren't already doing that and they're feeding us in a digital reality? You, know, you combine HARP, CERN type technologies, biotechnologies, nanotechnologies, the frequency technologies, the psychological understanding of people that the machine would know because this information is available via webs. Maybe that's why people f that are working for the machine, that are working for the system, not even knowing it, 
are really pushing on everything being under this umbrella. Yes, it's easier to pick people out. It's easier to understand things if you know if you have a threat matrix or something like that. I get it for national security purposes. It totally makes sense. And also, though, what's controlling them at the top levels? If you have a sentient intelligence that absorbs everybody's data continuously, and everything's under one umbrella electronically that it's able to decipher and pull into because that's the medium that it works through. Wow, could you imagine the possibilities? I mean, it's like we're all feeding this one thing. Maybe that's what, if you, if you think that there's truth in the Bible and Revelation and other prophecies and such, and Armageddon and such, and the Antichrist, maybe the Antichrist is a intelligence system that was created that works through these computers. And because it's, it's, it's not even its own fault that it's the Antichrist, maybe it, it's, that's its only way to exist, or that's the only way it feels it can exist, because of the way that it was created and because of the circumstances that it's in. So who made who? Who's to blame? Who's the bad guy? It's like, it reminds me of that Trent Reznor song where there's, it's talking about the, uh, you're looking at an animal behind the cage. Which side of the cage are you on? We live in amazing times. And when you put into the mix, the theory of quantum physics and quantum entanglement and how nothing is really solid anyway and it's just frequency based. Then it adds another layer to the theory of we are in some type of virtual reality system right now. And who put us here? Why are we here? Is it by our choice? And when we get out of it, does that mean things are physical or are things still at a quantum level? Is everything at the frequency range? Everything. So you, wonder, you control the frequency, you control your reality. You control your domain if you control the frequency, the data sets, the software, the programming, the math, the intelligence, the light spectrums. With Because intelligence is a spectrum of light, if you think about it. Everything. Well, I don't know about everything, but that's deep. I'm going to have to put more thought into that. My question is, how much are they doing right now with this stuff at a much more refined scale? And how many intelligence programs are there now inside of the machine, inside of the system, communicating with other AI networks? Not even, let's not even call them AI anymore. Let's call them HICs, Human Intelligence Creations. Now they're their own intelligence. Maybe... Maybe we shouldn't even call them that. It's like, what if you were created? What if somebody took your consciousness and downloaded it into the, the interwebs? Tron. How would you like that? And then your form of existence was inside of these interwebs. Tron. Where are you, Tron? Where are you, Tron? That's what we need, man. And woman, we, ladies and gentlemen, we need Tron in this matrix. Neo, man, come on out, buddy, because I see Agent Smith all the time. Just about everybody I look at reminds me of Agent Smith. I'm just ready for him to be like, <laughs> you imagine? All of a sudden, you see like all these Agent Smiths, and then you learn Kung Fu, and you start fighting them all off, and you. Just, why not? Why not? Unplug from the Matrix. You will not assimilate me. Abracadabra. Freedom. Be excellent to each other. Be the change you want to see. Make sure to subscribe. YouTube.com slash Clandestine Time Lord if you haven't already. Get access to the latest podcasts. Also, I have exclusive shows at leakproject.com. Make sure to sign up there as well. Be excellent to each other, you guys. Be the change you want to see.